Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I am going to be doing a ranking of the First Law books. If you've been a subscriber to my channel for a while now, you will know that Joe Abercrombie is one of my favourite authors. The First Law world is just one of my favourite worlds to be in. I love his character work, I love the depth to his stories and First Law is a world that I think about probably way too often. So I thought it would be fun to do a video because I've actually done a First Law related video recently. So I thought I would do a stack ranking of the 10 books that are out in the First Law world and let you know how I feel about them and how I would rank them. So let's get started. So in 10th place we have Sharp Ends. This is probably not a surprise to anybody. This is a short story collection and it essentially has a bunch of short stories that follow a bunch of characters that we already know and love in the First Law world. Then it also follows a few characters that don't exist in the First Law world or at least the other books. And I just thought it was fun. There were some stories that I like more than others. That always happens with short story collections. It didn't really change my life I would say but I quite liked some of the stories that we got in there. I really liked the story that we get at the beginning of the book and then the one that we get right at the end of the book. The first one is the one about Glockta and then the last one is the one about Logan. And we see Glockta before he becomes the Glockta that we know and love in the first book and it's just really interesting to see a very different side to Glockta and then we see Logan when he's a very young, very immature, very rough and ready individual and it was fun. Like, I liked it. It didn't, like I said, it didn't change my life, but I think there were some good stories in there. In ninth place, we have Best Served Cold. Now, Best Served Cold is one of the standalones. It is the first standalone in the trio of standalones. So you read this one technically after Last Argument of Kings, so the end of the first trilogy. And I liked it. I thought it was good. I liked the character of Monza. I think she's a really interesting character and she was my favourite part of that book aside from Shivers. But it was it was okay. I think the biggest issue that I had with that book was the fact that it's very repetitive. The book is essentially divided into five parts. I think it's five parts, might be seven parts. But once you get past like the first two or three parts, it gets super repetitive because Monza is exacting revenge on a bunch of people. And once we get through the first like two or three people, we're essentially following the same kind of story arc. And I wasn't the biggest fan of it. There were some really interesting characters. Like I think Monza is a really, really great character just in general. Shivers for me really shines in that book and that's where I really developed a kinship to his character. And the other one that I really liked in that book was Morvia. Morvia is absolutely hilarious and weird and wacky. And I loved reading about him, but there wasn't enough to really keep me engaged towards the middle part of the book. I think the ending was really good and really satisfying, but there were bits in the middle that really wavered for me and that's why it's in ninth place. In eighth place, we have The Blade itself and that is the first book in the First Law trilogy. So it's the first book that you will ever read when you enter the First Law world. And I really like this book. I think a lot of people give this book a lot of hate because there is really no plot. We're getting a lot of context. We're getting introductions to these incredible character list. We're getting a really good understanding of the world and how it works, which I actually think really works. A lot of people complain about this book because there isn't tons going on and there isn't really a direct plot that really comes into place in the second book. But I think as a first book in a trilogy goes, like it's got to be one of the stronger ones. I think we have a really good understanding of the characters and the world by the time that we really jump into the plot in book two. And I think Joe Abercrombie really showcases his strengths as a writer. Obviously he gets better as he writes the books. I just fell so in love with his writing in that book and the fact that it was a debut is actually insane to me. I think it's a good entry point into the world. A lot of people give it hate but that's because people love hating on things so take what you want for it. In seventh place we have The Wisdom of Crowls. This is the final book in the Age of Madness trilogy. So this is the latest book that has come out. I think it came out about two years ago and I really enjoyed this book. Every single book now f going upwards was uh, five stars. So all of these books were five stars, despite the fact that they're all five stars, I have internally ranked them in my brain. And I really did like Wisdom of Crowls as a book. I thought it was a really satisfying conclusion to the Age of Manus trilogy. I think we really kind of hit the breaking point and we saw kind of chaos 
just erupt and it was a really really interesting and fun time. I really enjoyed the thematic work in that trilogy and like I said that all comes to a head by the finale of the third book and it was wacky, it was crazy, so much happening and it's an ending that makes you want more and I really really cannot wait for the day that Joe Abercrombie announces that he will be doing another trilogy. I really, really hope he does. Or maybe some standalones. I'm not precious about it. In sixth place, we have Red Country. Red Country is the third standalone. So this is the sixth book that you will read if you're reading in publication order, which you absolutely should. Now, Red Country is Joe Abercrombie's take on a Western. I love Westerns. I love cowboys. I love reading about the very human experiences of people who are, you know, kind of in that time or who are living on the Western front. Like, I really find those stories to be compelling. Joe Abercrombie is a Larry McMurtry fan, and he has talked about many times how Lonesome Dove is one of his favourite books of all time. That's why I want to read it at some point, but it's such a chunky book. And I think this is maybe his ode to the Western subgenre, and I really loved everything about it. To me, it was one of the most emotional books, especially by the end of that book. I definitely, if I didn't have a heart of stone, probably would have burst out crying, but I definitely did like shed a little bit of a tear here and there. It's just very emotional. It's a very simple story. I, I wouldn't say the plot is a particularly sophisticated plot like some of his other books, but there is a very specific goal that has to be achieved. And we go on this kind of meandering journey with this really interesting cast of characters that all felt really fleshed out. And the really great thing about Red Country as well is that we get some familiar characters that we all know and love. And so it was a fun time. I loved it. I feel like Red Country gets a lot of hate and I don't know why. So don't listen to the hate people because it's really good. I guess the one thing that I, I could see people might have an issue with is the fact that I don't think a ton happens. It is very much about this journey and these character interactions. And if you're not a very character driven reader, I can understand why that might not interest you. But it's Joe Abercrombie, he does characters better than anybody else. So I don't know why you would be reading it <laughs> if you don't like character centric stories. I don't know. In fifth place, so we're getting to halfway, we have A Little Hatred. This is the first book in the Age of Madness trilogy. This is book eight in the entire world if you read Sharp Ends after Red Country. And it's really, really good. Like it's a really, really good introduction to this kind of second age of First Law. We are following the offspring of some of the main characters of the original trilogy. There is a really nice continuity there and it feels really familiar and we can really focus on the characters because the world feels so familiar to me and I'm sure it does to so many other people. And we get introduced to a new cast of characters as well and it was just a really great way to set the scene, you know, for what becomes a really insane trilogy and there's so many highs and lows and I thought it was perfectly executed. I think if I were to compare that to The Blade itself, Age of Manus is, is definitely stronger. But I think a, a big part of that is because we're already very familiar with the world and, you know, we're just kind of getting ourselves back into it. And I think when you're familiar with something, it's always, I don't know, a little bit more easier to digest because you feel nostalgic for what you've previously read. I loved it. It was really, really good. All right, in fourth place, we have Last Argument of Kings. So this is the third book in the First Law world. And I really love the ending of Last Argument of Kings. That ending had me shook. The bit with the part at the end with Baez and Jezel, and I'm not gonna say anything more than that, was just, I still have no words for it. I still have no words for how absurd and ridiculous and evil and messed up that ending was. It was a gut punch and I think it was one of those twists that I still think about to this day. It's still one of the best executed twists I've read. I just did not see it coming. I don't know if other people did and I just completely missed it, but I did not see that twist coming and it was so satisfying. And I love the fact that some of the character arcs as well were very open-ended by the end of the book. I just think it was a really good way to finish off the trilogy. It left the door open to the following books and yet it still did tie up a lot of loose ends in a way that felt super satisfying as the reader. All right, we are down to the top three. I'm really curious if anybody has guessed my order, but in third place, we have A Trouble With Peace, and that is the second book in the Age of Manus trilogy. So that is book nine overall. 
The Trouble with Peace is incredible. All the, the next three books are all perfectly executed in my opinion. There is not one thing that I can possibly fault from a writing perspective. All three books are just perfection. They all have very particular strengths and I think for me A Trouble with Peace is just, there's so much happening in this book, so much happening that I just didn't really know whether I was coming or going when I was reading the book and I mean that in the best way possible and we just got this kind of culmination of all these things that happen at the end of the first book and it really just kicks everything off with a bang and it was just absolutely perfectly executed. Everything about A Trouble With Peace was just perfection. There was something that he did in the A Trouble With Peace from a writing perspective where he did this kind of perspective hopping so there would be like a scene let's say like a battle scene and then he would start off with one of the main characters perspective like leo and then he would quickly jump to another pov which would just be some random person then he would jump to another one which would be another random person then jump to another one another random person and it was just such an effective way to tell the story and to get the very real experiences of the average person because we're following such you know pivotal characters right and they all have a very pivotal role to play but the fact that he then mixed it in with these just average people was just a genius move absolutely genius move and i think he's one of the few authors that i've seen do this really really well it was one of my favorite things about the book there were a few chapters where we had that perspective hopping and I, I loved it. I really, really loved it. And it, it, it does happen a little bit in the final book as well. But I think In a Trouble with Peace is where he just, he executed it perfectly and he balanced it just right. All right, in second place, we have The Heroes. I was very surprised when I finished this book and I absolutely loved it. The Heroes, in theory, should be the one that I enjoy the least because I love reading a good battle scene, but it's not something that I naturally seek out. It has to be written in a very specific way. It has to be written in a way that Baker writes it where it feels really epic and it feels very kind of meta in a way. And I haven't really found anybody who writes battle scenes like him just yet. I have a feeling Steven Erickson probably does a really good job of that. And I think Abercrombie does a decent job of battle scenes. I've, I've enjoyed, you know, the battle scenes that he's written throughout all the books that I've read. But The Heroes for me, you know, I was worried because it is basically about a war. And yet it's a book ultimately about how boring and uneventful war can be. The book is split into different parts. We get the bit before the war, then we get a section during the war, and then we get a section after the war. And the, the section during the war is the biggest part. And it's just such a fascinating insight into how, how boring and how pointless war can be ultimately, because you just have a bunch of people standing around 99% of the time and then 1% of the time you have people fighting and it's just I don't know I, I I came off the back of it thinking wow war's really pointless like it's really really pointless I just loved it I just think it was a really interesting angle on war I don't know if that was necessarily the point that he was making but it felt like to me that it was really an analysis on whether war is ever really worth it because ultimately it's just a bunch of people standing around and then within moments the direction of that war can be decided and what does it really leave anybody with ultimately at the end of it. I just loved it. I really liked all of the perspectives and even though there wasn't tons happening and it was mainly just people standing around, it, there were a lot of really interesting moments between characters that I just thought were chef's kiss. So that means that we only have one left and that is Before They Are Hanged and that is the second book in the First Law Trilogy. This book is absolute perfection. It's the book that I've I've not really reread the entire series yet but I have reread Before They Are Hanged because I love everything about that book. The way that the characters develop, the way that the story really begins to pick up, all of the twists and turns, the thematic work is really comes into its own and there's just so much that happens there's so many quiet character interactions in before they are hanged that just really resonated with me for one reason or another and oh there was just certain character arcs that were just absolutely perfectly executed jezel's arc in before they are hanged is perfection logan's arc as well perfection pharaoh perfection like 
Baez as well. Oh, just literally every single character is absolutely perfectly executed. West as well. Like, it's just all the character arcs were so satisfying the way that they developed from book one and the way that they set up these characters for book three. There's this constant sense of something doesn't really feel right and we don't know why, so we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. And I loved it. I loved this kind of mystery element that we had bubbling under the surface. And I love the fact that it kind of hits a high as well, kind of towards the middle and end of the book when there's a reveal that happens. And I didn't know what to think as the free die. I had no idea where the direction of the story was going. And yet it felt super satisfying to read and it hit all the notes in my opinion. And that is why I've ranked it my favourite book. It's one of my favourite books of all time. I will reread it again and again and again. It's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. So there we have it. Let me know down below what would be your ordering of the First Law World. If you haven't read all of the books, just rank the ones that you have read and we'll take the conversation down below. First of all, as we all know, and as I've said before, literally one of my favourite series of all time. I will happily talk about it until the end of time because it's just that good. So thanks for watching, folks. Stay safe as always. Take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.